So uh, at the at the time of recording, I'm I'm kind of sick, and I uh, may not even come across the camera like I am sick at all. The reason I'm recording today is is because I like to record, and honestly, um, I have time to record today, so why not use that time? <laughs> even though this won't be out for like a few weeks or so. Uh, but yes, as you can see, we're making loads of steel, boatloads of it, from bedrock iron ore. Which I'm currently running the RBMK and all that, and I've just been letting the drills run forever. Like, we got a lot of tantalum now, we got a lot of, a lot of stuff that's very valuable. But here is the bedrock iron ore. As you can see, that's a lot of bedrock iron ore. How much does this- it still has enough energy to keep going. I know we're running out very quickly, so... I wanna go repair the helicopter, and then we'll go check out the Colton vein. Maybe. Oh, we haven't flown around in the helicopter in ages. And I've been making loads of PVC, by the way. <laughs> Over the past four days, I have produced a lot of PVC. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, 60 PVC? I don't think I've ever had that much. Ever. So, yeah. Maybe we'll recharge the armor, too. That'd probably be a good idea. So we can go to the nether safely. How much coal coke do we... We don't have enough for anything. Anyway. The main thing we're doing today is we're taking care of the desulfurized oil, correct? And uh, I know last time we were running out of steel. Well, I'll let you all guess how many how many steel crates of steel I currently have in the basement. I don't know what you're going to get if you, you guess it correct, but next episode I'll tell you what how much I got, so... I guess you just get the satisfaction of, of knowing that you're right. Um, sour gas. So we need to process the sour gas through a wonderful catalytic converter, which also requires PVC pipes, of course. That's, the, that's not what we're looking for. This is what we're looking for. So, 12 cast steel plates, which we're going to just... Crap the entire box of steel, probably, from over there. I have not done that much bauxite stuff. In fact, uh, that I've not seen that plant running since we first did our bauxite stuff. <laughs> we only did that once, so, but we st we got at least we got we got one uh, one steel crate of it, <laughs> one steel crate of aluminium. So you you may, you may see something coming to this channel pretty soon, and. Uh, uh, the reason I'm talking about this right now is because, it, well, we're, um, I, I don't think it will be out by the time, well, it will probably be out before this is out, but anyway, I, I may have a new game coming to the channel that we have not played since I was, like, in 8th grade, but I enjoyed that game a lot. What is that game called? Uh, it's called Zero-K, okay. But uh, if, if that video is not out by this point, then then just, just wait for the video and you'll understand what that is about. So, cadmium steel is actually an alternative to technetium steel, as you can see there. Which, cadmium steel is made from cadmium powder and steel powder, I believe. And you just kind of smelt them down into in, in, in the crucible, so... Okay. One, one of these, and then eight... Okay, so if you had eight ingots, you would get an entire. Oh, you get one one ingot. That that's garbage. That is a waste. Wait, no, 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 no. When you have one ingot of cadmium and eight ingots of steel, then you end up getting getting uh, one block. So it's not garbage at all. But it's it's not as good. Well, actually, it is better. It's better than what am I saying? It's better than uh, technetium steel. But we have loads of technetium, so I am not concerned with that. Plus, it's not radio- that's- that cadmium is not radioactive. So, that's- that's a good advantage to it. I guess. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Which gives you 4. But we need 12 of these guys, you see? So that means we're gonna need 36, roughly. And, uh, that can easily be done by just taking that and that, and, uh, then doing that. Boom. 36. And, uh, copper plates are next. Copper is not something I have a lot of. In fact, uh, yeah, we ha we only have copper powder, so I probably should get some of that processed up. Uh, I don't know. I, uh... Now, this oxygen is going to be destroyed today. We're going to basically destroy the oxygen by, um, using the, the catalytic 
Wait a second. What does this do to sourness? <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna be looking at that because I think we can just get rid of this. I think we'll be able to get rid of that. I don't know. Eight niobium, four technetium steel, or cadmium steel, which the technetium is not down here, but here is the niobium. Eight pieces of that, and uh, honestly, what's incredible is the fact that I have not one, not two, three iron chests, or iron crates worth of this garbage. This is insane. This is the most I've ever had. Usually, you don't get more than like zero ingots because you're always using it. But here, I have even more than that, in fact. I actually have some in one of these guys, too. Because I have smelted some up, I think. Eh? No. Not at all. Okay. And uh, Colton, we're also doing pretty good on that, so... Okay, so once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and grab some of the technetium steel ingots. Which we might have some in here. One, two, three, four. It's non-radioactive. Of, of course, you can actually just make it straight from this. Which is radioactive. One, two, three, four. Those. And uh, the second you mix these two together, it becomes non-radioactive. Which is which is really nice. And I bet, I bet GregTech 6 um, adds compatibility to make these uh, into tools. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't played that much GregTech 6. And I don't really want to... Um, do that. I'm taking a break from Greg Deck in general with this series, so I just do know that Greg Deck 6 adds compatibility for the dash, which is crazy. For, for, for dash tools, at least. You can make it. Okay, you know what I mean. But it's, it's interesting how they have compatibility. Very cool. Next up is steel shells and steel pipes and advanced circuits, which I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to do. One, two, three advanced circuits and uh, we probably should look into making the rocket because uh turns out that the hdr carrier rocket was actually removed intentionally and uh, that makes me very sad because i updated not knowing that but uh anyway because <laughs> we would ha we would already have the uh, the thing launch <laughs> um the asteroid miner launch I don't even think we're gonna go- well... Mm, yeah, probably we're going for that. Why? Because... The Asteroid Miner gives you access to a variety of materials that you don't normally have access to. Trixite, um, crystals of plutonium, stuff like that that's really valuable. Gets you polonium, which is valuable for making, of course, the power cells or batteries. Upgrading those. I have not upgraded any of the batteries. What the heck is that? Get that out of here. Ghost. Come on. Do the ghost trick. Okay, well, I don't know how that how that happened, but crazy. Okay. I mean, I kind of wish I had 64 catalytic reformers. I'm not even sure what I would do with that number of reformers. Honestly, that kind of would, would probably- that would just be uh, annoying. You don't need that many. It just takes up extra space in the chest. Because <laughs> you're never going to use that many catalytic reformers. Also, we need to make actual iron at some point. I think that's a good idea. Come on, wrap this around. Good. Then take those. Make some iron plates. Boom, boom. Make some coil. Boom. So, I got this. Which is a... Large mine drill template. Uh, I don't need that. What? Okay, we need this. One, two. Hey, we just need one. Give me that. Yeah, and this. Okay, so we type in catalytic reformer, right? It gives us this. Boom, beautiful machinery. Put that garbage back in there. Uh, just use my coal tar, I think. Maybe. Shove that in there. Boom. We, we don't need it in our inventory anymore. I don't know why I've been carrying that around. Shove this into here. Nice. Wait, didn't we encounter a meteorite that gave us like 600 pieces of that stuff? What do I do with that? Because I might use that to make a, an episode at some point. Okay, well, let's move it. Let's move on. 
So here's the catalytic reformer, which will process the sour gas from this guy. Which, uh, it kind of takes up a, a bit of space here, don't it? <laughs> oh my. Well, how are we going to fit this in here? Oh, by the way, if you look closely on this guy... Where is that? Okay, where's the valve? There's a valve on this thing. Dang! Okay, it's not on there. Sometimes th there will be a pony riding around on this part here. Or at least there used to be like that. Um, that could happen. I encountered that once with my friend back in August. So, I or September. Um, so it might change. I'm not so sure. Anyway, this, as you can see, takes in one thing. And uh, also has a wanted picture. This this has a wanted picture, dead or alive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this one has a wanted picture <laughs> of a different cat. <laughs> nice. I hope we get more machines like this, but... Um, Probably not, they're probably not going to be for real. 1916. Interesting. You know, I love how this has turned into an episode where we're just looking at the appearance of these. Does this guy have a number on him too? Because they look similar, so... I kind of was thinking there might be a number on that guy. No. Then we're going to have the, 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 num the number 1917. I, I don't know why. I, I don't know, it seems like it, it's... Uh, put 2024 on it. That's a good number. So the funny thing about a catalytic converters is that I'm pretty sure that the, the amount of material, in, the stuff inside is not worth as much as the um, the actual, what's it called, catalytic converter itself. <laughs> so, and I've seen a video of a guy who actually took out or removed the stuff um, from the inside, which is cool. Crazy. Uh, using chemistry, of course. So the reason people use iodine tablets or, uh, to avoid, you know, radiation, the reason that works is because you can actually absorb radioactive iodine into yourself. And so by absorbing iodine, or by taking it in iodine, you actually prevent yourself from absorbing the radioactive iodine from the environment and air and all that, which is crazy. Okay, so sour gas is what we're gonna name this guy. And uh, I don't know how much energy these use, but I can only assume it's not going to be very much because it's oil. <laughs> I'm just assuming that. I, I don't actually know. Cannot confirm. Nor deny. So, ow. That hurt. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hydrogen. Sorry. I just bit my tongue. And sometimes that happens. And it's the most stupid thing. Anyway, this gives you petroleum gas, which is not something I really need any, um, and liquid hydrogen, in addition to the other products that sour gas gives you, which is nice. And uh, there's our urine pipe, so that's going to take in the urine, aka sour gas, which I believe is H2S, I think. Uh, but an HBM mod is contaminated with the, uh, the sour gas, is clearly contaminated with petroleum gas. How much does this guy need? Okay, so we're gonna play a game here. This guy needs 2,000... This guy has 2,600, okay? We don't care about the 20,000. We already know. That's just gonna be the same as his. 2,670, which... To get the 4,000, you're gonna need to have 30. To get the... 700... 2,700... To get... 1,330, looks like, would be what we need. So, 1,330. Will this guy yield 1,330? Is a good question. So when we're forming sour gas, 1,000 will give you 150. So there is a loss of hydrogen, which is not ideal. Okay, well, we know, we know. So now we can avoid doing anything stupid, and we can just connect that straight up. Boom. And as you can see, we are now left with Sulfur, um, sulfuric acid, petroleum gas, and liquid hyd- no liquid hydrogen, but we have petroleum gas. Which that gave us 585, which is- which is not enough, by any means. I'm gonna be completely honest with you all. This- th there's no reason to do any, um, any- anything with that. D don't hook them together, that's- th th that's no- 
You're not gonna get anything from that. It's not worth it. Instead, you can hook these to a mixer. Because you have oxygen here, right? And this is a waste product. We don't really want the oxygen. And you have hydrogen here. Which oxygen on its own does not burn. But oxygen and hydrogen, together, burn to form water. Which means that it's not pollution when we burn our hydrogen in a gas flare. So, we can make energy without polluting the environment. Beautiful, right? Let's go and do it. I kinda regret not smelting up that copper. Uh, we do have copper. It's on standby. It, it's just that I did not smelt it up. I think our ultimate goal with the desulfurized cracked oil is to get it to be crude oil again. Uh, there's ways of doing such a thing and getting crude oil back from a product that is not actually oil. Which usually involves coking to get the cracked oil, which we've already- that's how we're getting this, um, desulfurized cracked oil. Which, when we process it, it's going to give us a bunch of stuff, and I don't remember what stuff that- what that stuff is. Also, I do know I have another mixer around here. I just don't know where the mixer is hiding. Because I can put the mixer into use at the new facilities. So, thermoelectric element. Fun. I love this. Yay. Okay, I got everything we need for a gas flare. So, that will make the gas flare. Now, we're gonna, like I said before, you mix up. Your hydrogen and your oxygen, and yet you get oxyhydrogen, I guess. I don't know. That's water? Water? Don't they react hypergolically? Or, well, um... That's rocket fuel, basically. <laughs> basically. Um... Trying to think of what the... They, they just, just react, like, immediately. They don't really care. I mean, they are basically on opposite sides of the periodic table, which makes them super reactive. Except, um, the thing about... It, that that would be uh, the very the very very far edge that the very last column is not reactive at all of course you can get very one wonderful compounds like xenon difluoride and stuff which exists by some kind of black magic and i don't understand it there's even radon difluoride and i've read a paper about that um for some reason people don't experiment with radon <laughs> i think i know why that is mm, yes i wonder why people don't experiment with radon <laughs> Oh my gosh, this place is looking crazy. <laughs> I'm only now realizing how industrial this is starting to look. Um, with all of these machines like this. Okay, so this is going to be for hydrogen, right? So we're going to have hyd uh, hydrogen, which goes through here. Liquid hydrogen. I'm not sure why it's a liquid. And then we need oxygen. And then we're just going to put that... Um, well, actually, oxyhydrogen. We don't need an oxygen pipe. We already have the oxygen pipe, just this being next to it. Boom. So, it's gonna mix liquid hydrogen. Huh? What? It's just, just liquid hydrogen and oxygen. <laughs> what? You can make liquid hydrogen into oxyhydrogen on its own? <laughs> what kind of sorcery is this? This guy will be for the oxyhydrogen. One problem. This, when it produces liquid hydrogen, could send it into here, which would be a severe issue. Level 5, super issue. But I think that will be fine. So this guy is doing his stuff. And this guy is doing his stuff. And there's liquid oxygen going into here. No hydrogen yet, which is good. And when there is oxy oxyhydrogen, it will just go like that. Oxyhydrogen may be able to be ran in a gas, a combine cycle gas turbine. I don't know. I have never done that. I actually, this is my first time making oxyhydrogen. Because there's actually a good reason to do it now. We need to got to deal with the waste byproducts from electrolysis and all that. It's pretty good.